I may have described this before, but this will put it in a concise form. Um, so what are we actually going to do in this lab? We're going to titrate. Um, 0 0.1 molar acetic acid with 0 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide, aqueous, aqueous. Okay, now why are we gonna do that? Well, the procedure says that you put 25 milliliters of this in a 125 milliliter uh, Erlenmeyer flask. And you measure the pH periodically as you add base to it. So we're gonna have a measured, we're gonna have a starting point, and we're gonna measure that pH, and then we're gonna add some base. I think in the beginning we add two milliliters at a time, and then we slow down to one milliliter, and we slow down to a half a milliliter. Uh, and you measure the pH with each of the additions of that sodium hydroxide. So um, the data set itself is going to be pH here, and then this is added base, right? And this will be in milliliters. So you're gonna measure pH each time you add base. All right. So when you do that, then when you get all that information, uh, follow the procedure and get all the information, we're gonna plot that graph. So this is added base. Um, and we would say sodium hydroxide, uh, 0 0.1 molar uh, milliliters. And this is pH. And what you're going to find is that you're going to start off at a pH in the neighborhood of, oh, three and a half or so. There we go. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 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 eight twelve. You're going to start off in this neighborhood down here, and it's going to it's going to give you a boost of pH in the beginning, and then it's going to sort of flatten out. And then you're going to reach a certain amount of base where you're close to the equivalence, and it's going to shoot way up like this. And then at some point, it's going to level off like that. So that's the general form. What's What's called in the science is a sigmoid curve. It looks like an S. <clears throat> so the added amount of base here is the equivalence point. That's when the amount of acid is exactly equal to the amount of base. And in order to get the dense center of your uh, buffer zone, you need equal amounts of acid, acetic acid and acetate conjugate base. And that occurs at exactly one half equivalence. Right here. Okay. <clears throat> Now, if we, we take that information and we look at henderson hasselbach pH equals pKa plus the log of acetate divided by acetic acid concentrations. Okay? That means that if we know the pH at which this is equal to that, then this term becomes 
zero. Okay, where does that happen? That happens right here. That's when half of this has been used up and turned into that. So if we have half of this used up, whatever half is left is equal to the amount of this. Right? So that's where half equivalence is your point or pH there. And if we do that, then the pH at which these are equal is actually equal to pKa. So if we find out what the pH is at half equivalence, then we know what the pKa is. And then the pKa is just a log transformation, is the minus log of Ka. Right? So then you just solve for Ka out of this. And the Ka is um, 10 to the minus pKa in your calculator. It's the anti-log of the negative because that negative has to come over here first. Okay, so that's how we find the Ka from all of that reaction. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Yeah, there's a more, there's a, Discussion in your method, I'm pretty sure. And then what we need is, hold on a second. Discussion questions. Hey, stop me if you, if you need to clarify something, especially before I erase everything. All right. So that's the theory behind what we're doing. Uh, now, these discussion questions are ones that I'm supposed to cover with the class uh, before the lab. So let's say for number one, define the following terms. So what's the equivalence point? The equivalence point is uh, that point in the titration where the uh, concentration of acid, and actually it's not that, it's the moles of acid are exactly equal to the moles of the base. That's the stoichiometric equivalence point. That's what that means. Moles of acid equals moles of base. Okay, what's the end point? The end point is the pH at which the indicator changes color and signals the equivalence point. Now that's not gonna be exactly equal. This pH and that pH are not gonna be exactly equal. Actually, this is the pH at moles equals moles. This is the pH where the color changes hopefully indicating when you're very close to the equivalence point. So they're not exactly equal. How about Ka? What's Ka? Let's see. Well, this one, notice it says you only need to supply the formulas for Ka. All right? So what's Ka for an acid? Well, it's equal to hydrogen ion concentration, times the conjugate base divided by the undissociated acid. That's the generic definition for Ka. And pKa is simply a log transformation, the negative log of the Ka. Okay? 
That's number one. Number two. How many of these do I have? Three, I think. Yeah, just three. Okay, if 23.9 milliliters, 23.9 milliliters of sodium hydroxide solution is required to titrate 25 milliliters of 0 0.105 molar, 0 0.105 molar acetic acid solution. What's the concentration of sodium hydroxide? Okay. So we need to know what's its molarity. <clears throat> okay. At the equivalence point, the number of moles of acid equals the number of moles of base. Moles of acid equals moles of base. Okay? So, um, moles of acid, and we're going to use millimoles. 25 milliliters times 0 0.105 molar should be equal to um, 23.9 milliliters times um, a molarity. Molarity of the base. Okay? And because these volumes are in the same units of measure, and these concentrations will be in the same units of measure. So we don't have to change it to liters in this case. And we just do a simple calculation. We'll take this one times that one divided by this one. So I get zero concentration of base equals 0 0.1098 molar. Oh, round it off. Um, 0 0.110. There you go. Okay. Now, um, this works, molarity to molarity, this works if the acid and the base are both monoprotic or both diprotic. The same number of protons are absorbed or released for each formula unit. If we were trying to do this with sulfuric acid and sodium hydroxide, we would have to use normality. That's one of the purposes of normality to get around this problem because in normality, while the number of moles of acid equals, actually the number of moles of acid in that case, would not be equal to the number of moles of base because the moles of acid gives off two protons each. So you would either have to introduce a correction factor, multiple for the number of protons, or you would have to say um, the equivalence of acid equals the equivalence of base. When you do that, then this becomes normality and this becomes normality. You have to, you have to compensate, you have to calculate the normality here. If this were 0.1 nor, uh, molar sulfuric acid, it would be actually 0.2 molar or 0.2 normal because it makes two protons per molecule. I, but I haven't given you one of those. We're keeping it simple right now. That was two. And we got one more.
It's a good thing this thing, this uh, marker's about to run out of ink. Okay, in the titration of a weak acid, the midpoint corresponding to a pH value of 6.1. In the titration of a weak acid, the midpoint corresponds to a pH value of 6.1. What's the pKa? Okay, what do they mean by the midpoint? The midpoint here is, see, is this an acid? Yeah, weak acid. The midpoint is right here. That midpoint corresponds to, in this case, a pH value of 6.1. So we know what to do with that, don't we? The pKa is that value. And the Ka is equal to 10 to the minus 6.1. Uh, let's see, where's my 10, 10 power? Here it is. We got 7.94 times 10 to the minus 7. That's the Ka. Now notice, this is derived from the pH. It's got one decimal point. Right, one decimal point. Which means I should only have one significant figure here, correct? So that should be eight times 10 to the minus seven. But right. according to the rules, <laughs> that I gave you at the very beginning of this discussion, right? The decimal points in a uh, log derivative for the pH are equal to the number of significant figures. Okay. So those are all the discussion questions that the uh, method uh, required me as the instructor to talk to you about. The pre-lab questions, um, write the balanced molecular equation for the titration of acetic acid with sodium hydroxide. That should be simple, right? Because what happens? Well, the sodium and the acetate become the salt, and the hydrogen from the acid and the hydroxyl from the sodium hydroxide becomes water. So there are your products. You just be sure the balanced equation. The Ka of formic acid is. 10 to the minus fourth, the K of lactic acid is 10 to the minus fourth, but look at the coefficients. This one is a bigger value. It's a big and a smaller value. So which acid is stronger? Well, the formic acid is stronger. It's got a, a larger Ka value. What's the pKa of each acid? It's just the negative log transformation. Okay, and there's the procedure. And we have some lab questions at the end. Uh, based upon your um, experiment, what are these values? And then um, compare them to the accepted value. Right? We had that earlier. Um, let's see if I can find it. I think it's 1.8. Acetic acid, acetic acid. Hold on. Uh, where did it go? Well, there's the KB. I want the KA for acetic acid. If I can find it. Here we go. 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. That's the Ka for acetic acid. This is the accepted value. So that's what you'll compare your uh, experimental results to this one. And if you're going to do a percent error, 
always do it with a non-log value. If you compare log values, uh, it, the percent error, just, it just screws it all up. There's, there's really no comparison unless you do the calculation and then change that log value back into standard notation. But it's easier just to take this one and compare your value to this. Okay, Then you can do your percent error calculation. So what's the concentration of the sodium hydroxide solution you use to titrate the acetic acid? Well, the acetic acid is a concentration of 0 0.1 molar. And it's very stable over time. So that one is your reference. Then if you calculate what is the actual concentration of the sodium hydroxide solution? It should be less than that. It's nominally 0.1 molar. But sodium hydroxide is not stable over time. So you need to take, you need to find out, um, you're putting 25 milliliters of this solution, measured out accurately with a, a, a volumetric pipette. And then what's the volume of sodium hydroxide that was added to that? Well, you get that from your curve, right? Find the equivalence point, the volume of sodium hydroxide at the equivalence point. Right, it goes like this, like that, like that. There it is. What's that volume? And it goes in that formula, just like the one we worked earlier. And you can, you can calculate the actual concentration of the sodium hydroxide. Okay, and derive the henderson hauselbach equation. Do you remember how to do that? We did that in, uh, in the uh, lecture. What are you starting with to derive that? You're starting with the Ka expression for uh, an acid, a weak acid. Right? This one yields that plus that. Right? So what's the Ka expression for that? It's this times this over this. Okay? So I'll give you the next step and you finish. Take the negative log of that expression. Negative log of this, negative log of that only. Keep that term separate. Let's see. Did I do that right? Hold on a second. Uh, I'm sure it's in here. Anderson Hollenbach is in here somewhere. Here we go. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, yeah, that worked. That worked. If you take, uh, it might be easier also to rearrange this equation. If you're going to say pH first is equal to something, then solve it for this one first on one side and then put that one on the other side, then take the negative log of it. And you want to end up with no negative uh, operators in here, you want positive operators. That's one of the steps. So that's all I'm going to say about deriving the Henderson nozzle box. It's really very simple if you, if you know algebra uh, and how logs work. And I think that's it for pre-lab questions. Then you have post-lab questions we just talked about. That's it. Okay. So that's our discussion for this lab. And we can call it a day.